Don't buy Bitcoin now. Lark, what's going on, man? What are you smoking? What are you talking about, man? We should be stacking sats every day, every second. What's going on? Don't buy Bitcoin now. I'm going to tell you why in today's video. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. If you do like that topic, like Sam today with what was happening in this market, then a little tap on the old thumbs up button to let me and YouTube know that would be supremely freaking awesome. By the way, if you want to sign up for the newsletter, we talk about NFTs, altcoins, DeFi tutorials, token sales, airdrops, and much, much more. You can sign up for free using the link down below in the description. Now let's go ahead and get into the reasons why you don't want to buy Bitcoin now. Well, we're still trading under the 200-day moving average. That, of course, means we could still see further downward price action as the market really hasn't recovered its full bull status yet. You may as well just, you know, not buy Bitcoin now while it's cheap. Wait for it to start pumping. Wait for it to get up over the 200-day moving average. Don't accumulate under the 200-day moving average. Of course, accumulating under the 200-day moving average is a great time to accumulate, obviously. Now, one thing I do want to mention in a more serious note is that we have just had a bearish crossover on the daily MACD for Bitcoin, as you can see right here. I do have a buy order in at $42,500, so very short-term kind of stuff. We could see Bitcoin's price still, you know, moving down a bit, maybe retesting that lower area, maybe over the weekend, for example, over the next few days. So I do have a buy order there in just in case that is something we get to see. But in general, buying under the 200-day moving average is pretty good, pretty good. You don't necessarily want to wait for the price to start pumping to buy yourself some Bitcoin. Also, we have had a bullish crossover on the weekly MACD for Bitcoin. Now, the last couple of times that happened saw significant price appreciation for Bitcoin, 474% the two times ago that it happened and 57% the last time that it happened. But you probably don't want to buy the breakout for this. You don't want to buy the confirmation of this bullish crossover. You're better off to wait and, you know, buy the next top, buy Bitcoin when it gets up to $70,000, $75,000. Don't buy low, buy high. That's how winning is not done in crypto, obviously. <laughs> uh, next, I want to share this with you. MicroStrategy buys more Bitcoin. Smaller entities buying Bitcoin. Big flows in, in, into a lot of Bitcoin products. We're going to talk about all these individually. But right now, I just want to talk about this. is the smaller entities buying Bitcoin in bulk. So right now, you can see this is Bitcoin uh, held by entities with different balances. So here on the chart, we've got Bitcoin um, entities with balances between 10 and 100 Bitcoin. We can see they have had a significant move up. So right here, we have had uh, those guys buying more Bitcoin, as you can see right here. Has been a little bit of a sell-off recently, but in general, those guys are continuing to buy up Z Bitcoin. The big um, people adding Bitcoin right now are the people with between 1 and 10 Bitcoin. We've seen massive amounts of accumulation in this particular area. So these guys have been adding a lot of Bitcoin recently. We also see uh, balances between 100 and 1,000 Bitcoin steadily increasing, right? Steadily increasing, just, you know, ticking up ever so slowly. So look, don't, don't buy Bitcoin now. You're better off to wait for all the other retail guys to front run you, for all the entities to front run you. Let them get their Bitcoin first, okay? We don't wanna be impolite here and buy our Bitcoin before these guys do. Let them get their Bitcoin first, everybody. Come on now, come on. We also have the Canadian ETF product seeing an upsurge in interest. So as we can see here, We've had another 6,594 Bitcoin added to the Canadian ETF products since the uh, end of January, approximately. So 
Again, you don't want to buy Bitcoin now. You're better off to wait for the Canadians to get all of their Bitcoin first. You wouldn't want to buy Bitcoin and push the price up and then all the Canadians can't get their cheap Bitcoin, right? Again, let's let's be polite. Let's just give them give them their chance to stack up all that Bitcoin. Here uh, from Grayscale, Grayscale is running a massive advertising campaign to try and get their Bitcoin ETF approved. So they're gonna be putting uh, advertising on Amtrak trains and stuff like this. They've also come out and said they're considering suing the SEC, taking them to court essentially, if their spot Bitcoin ETF gets denied again. Now, if we get a spot Bitcoin ETF, like we got with the gold ETF, we're probably going to have a massive price pump. So if we get a similar situation, we could see the price of Bitcoin pumping by three, four, five, six hundred percent, which is exactly what happened to gold when gold got its spot ETF. So when we get the spot ETF and it will happen, whether it's Grayscale or another firm, whether it's in the next few months or next year, there will be a spot Bitcoin ETF coming to US markets. And as we covered yesterday, a lot of people want safe ways to invest in Bitcoin. They want secure ways, easy ways. In particular, people don't know how to buy Bitcoin. They don't know how to store it. They want to buy an ETF product on their Robinhood app or wherever else they like these kind of ideas. Grayscale or someone else is going to be bringing it to them. That spot Bitcoin ETF will come to US markets and it'll be mega popular when it does. We've had a lot of statistics about people who are literally just they don't want to buy Bitcoin until they can get a spot Bitcoin ETF. They don't want futures products. They want the real deal. A spot Bitcoin ETF will bring in so many billions of dollars. But you probably shouldn't buy Bitcoin now. It's better to wait until, you know, this story actually comes out and the markets pump like crazy and then buy Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Micro strategy. Macro strategy. <laughs> ah, Michael Saylor, I like that. <clears throat> Micro strategy, basically macro strategy now, has purchased an additional 4,167 Bitcoin, spending $190 million to do so. The company now holds 129,218 Bitcoin, acquired at an average price of $30,700 per Bitcoin. So don't buy your Bitcoin now. I know, I mean, I know MicroStrategy is buying their Bitcoin right now, but you should probably just wait. Just, you know, let MicroStrategy buy another 129,000 Bitcoin before you buy yours. They're going to gobble it all up. They're going to get their nice entry because they have been dollar cost averaging in a very, very serious way. Macro strategy, man. Those guys. Those guys. Institutional crypto funds saw $180 million of net inflows in the last week. So $180 million bucks coming into a variety of crypto funds. Not just Bitcoin, but Bitcoin as well. Ethereum and other, uh, other products, but... Bitcoin, of course, is always a major recipient of this. So again, don't buy Bitcoin. Now, I know the institutions are buying Bitcoin. The big money guys, they're buying Bitcoin. MicroStrategies, buying Bitcoin. Retail investors are buying Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But just wait. Don't buy your Bitcoin now. You want to let the institutions get all their Bitcoin first so you can buy it from them later for more money. That's how it works. Let the institutions buy first. Let the banks get their stuff first. Let Wall Street get their share of the pie first. And then you buy your Bitcoin, guys. That's how it works. Next, the guys over at Terra. Haven't actually been buying Bitcoin over the last few days, which is pretty interesting. Their last confirmed Bitcoin purchase um, was back here at the end of March. The last time their address received any Bitcoin was March 30th. Since then, they have not received any Bitcoin. Currently, though, they are sitting on 30,727 Bitcoin. So they spent about $1.2 billion, approximately, it seems, of the $3 billion that they're intending to buy, that they've been greenlit to buy to start with. So they have at least $1.8 billion more, potentially around $2 billion more to buy Bitcoin with. They haven't been buying here, though. I think they're waiting for the prices to come back down potentially a little bit because they know that when they start buying Bitcoin, it pumps the market. 
So yeah, we should just wait. We should just wait and let Terra get their Bitcoin first. Let them buy their other $2 billion of the Bitcoin. Don't buy Bitcoin before Terra. Don't front run these guys. Let them buy their Bitcoin, okay? I mean, they're going to wait probably for a lower price, but they are going to spend $2 billion more to buy Bitcoin. What's interesting, too, is that they have basically come out and said, so initially they said, look, we're going to buy $3 billion worth of Bitcoin. Then they said, well, we're actually going to probably buy up to like $10 billion worth of Bitcoin. So $3 billion is guaranteed. Um, guaranteed. It's been greenlit. They're stating that's their intention to do. 10 billion is kind of like a, you know, we'll get there someday. But now Do Kwan, the uh, co-founder of Terra, has actually come out and said basically that uh, they're going to be buying Bitcoin in perpetuity, meaning they're just going to keep buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. They have stated that they want the Terra Foundation to be the biggest holder of Bitcoin. I think uh, Michael Saylor is going to have something to say about that, guys. So, you know, happy Bitcoin buying, but they are planning on buying a heck of a lot of Bitcoin. So we shall see how much they're able to buy at reasonable prices, of course, before things get too crazy. And of course, the rumors keep swirling about Apple, whether or not we're going to see something happening at the... Bitcoin conference this week. A lot of speculation. The guy who did the El Salvador stuff, Jack Mahler's, um, with his Strike app, he's been hinting at some kind of Apple stuff, but it's all just rumor and speculation at this point. The vast majority of Apple rumors that have ever come up have all, well, been BS. Whether or not anything will happen now, who knows? Maybe they'll be integrating some kind of Bitcoin payments for the Apple Pay app. That would be pretty sweet. You know, payments and Bitcoin. I'm all about payments for crypto, obviously, but they haven't really seen mass adoption by people yet. People just mostly want to buy and hold their Bitcoin, but still, it'd be pretty cool to see Apple Pay integrating with uh, Bitcoin. That would obviously be very, very big news. But what you really want to see is a new corporate buy. You want to see Apple come out and say, hey, we bought a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, or Facebook to come out and say, hey, we bought a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin lay down the gauntlet to MicroStrategy and Terra and these other guys trying to buy Bitcoin because we will see more corporate buys. But again, you probably shouldn't buy Bitcoin now. You should probably wait until Facebook announces, wait until Apple announces or Microsoft or whoever the next big corporate Bitcoin buyer is going to be. Wait until they buy Bitcoin and then, you know, buy after them. Don't front run those guys. Don't wanna, we want to be polite, guys. Don't front run all these people. Anyway, obviously this video has all been a bit of tongue in cheek. It's always a good time to stack sats, man. You see right now what's going on. We have retail stacking sats. We have corporations stacking sats. We have protocols stacking sats. We have institutions stacking sats. All these people are buying Bitcoin right now. So you have to ask yourself the question, why wouldn't I buy some Bitcoin right now? Well, that's exactly what I have been doing. I've been telling you, I've been buying Bitcoin basically since we crossed under $42,500 a couple months ago. I've been buying red, uh, steadily ever since then, every couple of days or when we get significant dips, I just had some more Bitcoin in. I've been doing that now for the last few months and I'll continue doing that so long as we continue trading under the 200 a day simple moving average. I think it's a good time to buy Bitcoin. Obviously, I'm not the only one who thinks that. There's lots of other big players, small players, buying Bitcoin right now. Don't necessarily need to wait to buy Bitcoin. You can let everybody else front run you, or you can just stack some sats today. Anyway, thanks for watching today's video, and peace out till next time.